So here we are at Tech Ed 2009 um, for, and we're talking about Exchange 2010. And I would like to ask you some questions about our uh, fabulous writer for the HA component. I'd like to ask you some questions about our new technology around, uh, around high availability. Sure. So I know that this area has changed uh, quite a bit, and yet I understand it's somehow the same. So can you explain how we've changed it, but how it also is not different, where it's different and where it's the same between uh, 2007 and 2010? Sure. So one of the things we looked at were what were the challenges were we seen in the 2007 environment? Things like you had to know how to build a cluster before you could deploy our high availability solution. Uh, when you decided you wanted a highly available mailbox server, you couldn't install any other server roles with it. If you wanted to extend your high availability solution to site resilience, you had to use a different technology and, and one that didn't come with a, a graphical user interface. And then beyond that, if you wanted to do activation of your replicated data off-site, that was a manual process and there was a couple steps that you had to do to do that. You couldn't get any automatic, any automatic activation of that data. Now, one of the things that we looked at was how could we make high availability and site resilience more tightly integrated? How can we make the experience of stepping up to high availability in your data center and then incrementally adding site resilience off-site much easier than we've done in the past? So now what we have is, first we have this feature called incremental deployment. And that's our new way of saying, after you've deployed Exchange, then you can step up to high availability. And then if you want, you can use the same tasks that you use to deploy high availability to extend that to site resilience. Totally different from what you have to do today, where you have to make that decision ahead of time and actually build the infrastructure ahead of time. One of the other things that we did is we wanted to make failover and switchovers happen at a more granular level. Today in 2007, if you have a problem with your database, you're actually moving over an entire mailbox server. So with a server that can have up to 50 databases, you may potentially be interrupting 49 healthy databases because of a problem on one database. Now what we've done is we've moved away from the concept of a clustered mailbox server and we've introduced this new framework that gives you failover and switchover now at the database level. So if you have a storage failure or even a server failure, something that's affecting an individual database, we can take that database and activate it on one other server that has a replicated copy. And of course, you do all this after Exchange has been installed, which makes it so much better than what we had before. Once you decide you need HA, you don't have to rip out Exchange to redeploy it. You can just incrementally step up to it. So, what would this construct really look like? How do how do I think about it? Do I think about this um, for the for this high availability? Do I think about it as just a cluster? Do I think about it in some other way? What what is the what's the visual I should consider when I'm thinking sure. about this? Sure. So. One of the things that we did when, when we looked at moving the granularity level from the, the, from the server level to the database level is we realized that we no longer needed this construct called the cluster mailbox server. So we've actually done away with that. We've started now, we've, we've begun to move away from the cluster resource model. We still use some Windows cluster failovering technologies, but we're not a, a cluster aware application anymore. We're not a clustered app. So if you were to look at us from the cluster perspective, we're almost not there because the cluster doesn't know anything about Exchange. Now it's the other way around. Exchange is using the cluster, and Exchange has its own resource model that takes care of you know, activating the best copy on a failover and so forth. So you still you know, get the benefit of having the, the heart beating and the node management and the, the use of the cluster database, but you no longer have to deal with the, having things at the server level and a floating network identity that moves between nodes. So let's take an example. If I wanted to uh, run maintenance on a particular server, so what what do I do? What are, what are the steps that I take? Sure, great question. So it used to be you had to literally take this whole uh, clustered mailbox server and move it to another node. Now we have this process called uh, a server switchover. And the server switchover is your way of saying, hey, I'm about to do maintenance on the server or take it down for some reason or do something where I don't want it to be actively servicing clients anymore. So I do a server switchover and all of the databases on that server are then activated on one or more other mailbox servers in what we call a database availability group. So instead of now building a clustered mailbox server, now you build what we call a database availability group. And you put your mailbox servers into that and then you just replicate 
mailbox databases across those mailbox servers. So in the case of a server switchover, you're saying, take all the active databases that are on this current server that I want to take down for maintenance and make them active on other servers, one or more other servers, depending on whichever server is the best place to be active. After you've done that, all the databases on that server now are passive, and you can take the server down for maintenance or do whatever you need to do. So then how many copies can I have of an individual database within this database availability group? Well, that's another big change. In um, Exchange 2007, with cluster continuous replication, you in that one cluster, you can only have two copies of your data. There was always one active and one passive. With a database availability group, you can have up to 16 mailbox servers in that same group, and therefore you can have up to 16 copies of each database. So that gives you one active and 15 passive copies. Now can I have any of those passive copies sitting, uh, or an active and a passive sitting on the same server at the same time? No, not of the same database. We require you to have the database copies on other servers. Obviously, if you had it on the same server, you wouldn't be getting data availability because if that server went down, uh, having both copies on the one server aren't going to do you any good because we don't have another server on which we can activate the copy. But by by having the copy spread out on always on different servers, there's potentially always going to be a copy out there that we can activate in the event of a server failure. So now, are you saying that I'm going to have a server that's running all active then, and I'm going to have then possibly 15 servers that are all passive? Oh no, passive? not at all. You may have a server that has some active databases and some passive databases. In fact, that'll probably be the more common configuration. Generally, you wouldn't want, I mean, you could design it that way to have all your actives on one server, but the idea is now that databases can freely move around without being tied to a specific server, now you can be a lot more flexible with the way that you're laying out your databases in terms of the activeness or the passiveness. Okay, so in a certain sense then it sounds like I can have all my servers actively providing service at any yeah, given time. Yeah, absolutely, So absolutely. I never have a server that's just sitting there just doing That's right, work. and now you can even, you can make them more dense now too because we allow you to scale to twice as many databases per server now. 2007, we limited you to 50 databases per server. Now in 2010, we let you go up to 100 databases yeah. per server. So now, what is the um, the likelihood that I would ever have want to have 15 copies of a given database? I mean, don't you think that would be a little excessive? Um, it could be. I mean, it's really the, the number of copies you have is largely going to be driven by your um, redundancy and availability needs. Um, I. I uh, Certainly, the larger you grow a DAG, the more resilient it becomes to certain types of failures. But really, ideally, you have to decide for yourself, within reason, how many copies do you really need to meet whatever your business needs are for high availability. You know, for many customers, that might mean only having three copies of each database or only having four copies of each database. But we do give you the option to grow that large if your business needs dictate that. Well, thank you. Um, it just sounds like it's going to be a great, great uh, solution for the next generation, kind of incorporating the, the concepts from 2007 into a more integrated solution. Uh, that's very exciting. We're super cool. excited about it, yes. All right. Thank you.